Right, good morning from uh, Shillingford <laughs> on the Thames where we are doing a six kilometre swim today. We've just finished 3.7 and uh, my companions, there's Joe Robb and Marika Perkins. <laughs> what a beautiful <laughs> spot after 3.7 done. Uh, so anyway, we will be taken to the water again, but uh, very quickly, this week's uh, guest speaker is uh, the lovely Mary Casserly, who was diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's at 53, but had the, the symptoms for many years. Um, so uh, welcome, Mary. So good afternoon, Mary, and uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, come on the Mermaid uh, series of interviews around the brain conditions that we are supporting. Um, Thanks, Ben. So, so, by way of intro, you are currently the chairperson of the Early Onset Parkinson's Disease Association in Ireland, EOPD.ie, and you yourself are a sufferer of uh, Parkinson's. Um, so, Mary, can you can you talk to us very briefly around uh, how what the early symptoms of Parkinson's were for you when you were diagnosed and how it's impacted your day to day life since? Uh, thanks very much, Joan, for inviting me. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing what you're doing for this this cause, uh, uh, for the Henley Mermaids. We really appreciate it in the Parkinson's community. Yeah, um, I was diagnosed at the age of 53 in August 2018, but I did have many symptoms for, for many years. I probably probably started to notice first signs maybe of slowness and uh, in my late, late 30s and then towards my mid-40s then, uh, I would have started noticing um, more stiffness and um, more pain and uh, rigidity. And then I, I lost my sense of smell. I was sent to a neurologist and I was put on steroids but didn't come back. Then I noticed my arm wouldn't swing while I walked. I was getting problems with my wrist. Uh, I thought it was carpal tunnel syndrome. I had a frozen shoulder, uh, a lot of fatigue and uh, uh, sleep was, was started to be very disrupted. I was awake for hours at night. Uh, so there were their kind of the symptoms that um, are kind of on their own wouldn't maybe necessarily mean anything, but when you put them all together, um, it, it leads to a diagnosis, uh, but probably very hard to diagnose, can be hard to diagnose in um, early onset Parkinson's because it's not as prevalent as, as late onset. Interesting, interesting. And what uh, was it something like 175 or something you said in, in Ireland with early onset Parkinson's? Uh, we reckon there's about 1,500 under the age of 55, yeah, under the age wow. of 55. But um, Parkinson's is one of the fastest growing neuro neurological conditions, so it is on the increase, unfortunately. Right, right, right. And how has it impacted your day-to-day -day life, Dan? I believe, you, you you know, it kind of necessitated a career change for you. Yes, I I, I, um, I love my job. I worked in accounts, and I really like that. Um, but um, I suppose... I kind of, when I was diagnosed first, I thought maybe I could continue for a number of years, but it was kind of pain that stopped me working. So the pain was kind of, when it used to start at four o'clock, was starting at two, and then it was like starting at 10. So it was kind of hard to continue with, with pain. So um, I made a decision to give up work, but I decided to, uh, I wasn't going to give up everything. So um, I got involved then with, a, with the support group and I just found find that great. Uh, it just gives me a focus and... Uh, you know, it's, it's it's great to have met so many wonderful people around Ireland, and also it, it makes it, it lets you see people living a long time, you know, quite well with Parkinson's, you know, 17 to 20 years on, which is great. And you take a leaf out of their book, and, and it's usually like a positive attitude, exercise, and you know, trying to to manage the condition as well as you can. Right, right. And I see your kind of the ace at skipping as well. So all all going towards better management of the condition, really. Yeah, they, I suppose we're looking now, Joan, in that like, and the research has shown that it helps slow the progression, whereas years back, they probably wouldn't have known that. So at least, like, you know, with research, it's great that we can be more educated on what to do to help manage the condition. Right. Um, so, Mary, kind of the, the four charities that we're covering, Parkinson's is obviously one of them. Um, so, you know, the, the Parkinson's community in Ireland asked us specifically to, to raise funds for the Dublin Neurological Institute, all kind of aiming to get uh, deep brain stimulation, uh, surgery and therapy available in Ireland um, for Parkinson's sufferers. So, you know, I know nothing really about this uh, prior to, to, to the Mermaids Challenge this year, but 
for the, the viewers of uh, the video uh, here today, could you kind of outline the significance of that, uh, you know, the PD monitors and, and getting uh, DBS treatment yeah. and surgery available in Ireland? Yes, uh, well, deep brain stimulation is, is um, an advanced a treatment for advanced Parkinson's. And um, for many years, people from Ireland have been traveling to the UK to have this surgery done, which has been fantastic to be able to to, have, uh, to get that resource in, in the UK. Uh, but now it's um, it's coming to, to Ireland um, so that the, this, this operation will take place um, in Dublin. And uh, the purpose of the, the fundraising for this is, is th there's a lot of research have gone into these PD monitors or development, I should say. I think it's, it's been taken 13 or 14 years to develop these monitors. So they're just drop to your arms and legs and waist and um, it monitors your stride, your movement, uh, a, a lot of data that's sent back through the cloud through the, to the neurologist. Uh, that you, it's very hard to when you go to your neurologist visit to say exactly how you're feeling, how you're going on, whereas this is live data. Um, people, people will wear them for five days and then they have all that information to better manage uh, the condition. And particularly after the DBS surgery, there's a lot of kind of, you know, tweaking to try and get it right, uh, you know, the, the system right, uh, it takes a while. So they, this, this device will, will help the neurologist know as to how the, this, the device needs to be adjusted um, with, with this data that they will receive. So these, these PD monitors are really uh, a great breakthrough for treatment in Parkinson's. Yeah, so I think kind of just to spell it out a little bit more, you know, as I say, I didn't understand this before either, but um, so the, the deep brain stimulation therapy is basically to uh, help Parkinson's sufferers and uh, manage the involuntary tremors, basically. Yes. Yeah? So, uh, well, it, it could be, it, it could be managing, like some people don't have a tremor. So, that's kind of another myth that everybody has a tremor. Some people don't. Some people go uh, for surgery for all different things. So, um, and, and that's something that's always discussed with neurologists because, you know, it could be one uh, symptom that you have. You might think deep brain stimulation might sort it and it mightn't be. So, uh, it's always advisable that um, uh, patients really are clear about what the deep brain stimulation is do does, but it is, it, it is a, a great resource to have. Uh, not everybody will go for it. Um, people don't, not everyone will need it, but it, it is something there that, that is available if, if people do need to go down that road. Yeah, so it's basically bringing that treatment to uh, within the Republic of Ireland so that, you know, Parkinson's sufferers don't have to you know, the expense and the stress uh, of, of having to go over and back to the UK for that treatment. So um, final words really about uh, the mermaids, uh, Mary, and kind of a, uh, words to, to people looking at these videos. Yeah, well, we're, we're just grateful in the, in the Parkinson's community in Ireland that the Henley Mermaids are fundraising for us. Uh, we're absolutely delighted. I've seen the videos. A lot of training has gone into this over the winter months in the cold. Uh, in the River Thames. So thanks a million, Joan, for uh, putting yourselves forward for this fundraising because uh, like we need we need the, you know, better funding um, or we need this to be funded. Uh, these P PD monitors will really be a breakthrough in, in monitoring our condition. And like Parkinson's is all about management and the better management we get, uh, the more it helps us to live better and, and live well with the condition. So um, I'm really, really, really thankful to the Henley Mermaids for doing this. And if you can dig deep, support the Henley Mermaids for this uh, cause, everybody um, as affected by Parkinson's, everybody knows somebody with Parkinson's. It is one of the fastest growing neuro neurological conditions. So please, please uh, support this uh, worthy cause. Brilliant, thank you, Mary. And just to kind of finish off on that, uh, Donations can be made uh, via the Henley Mermaids uh, website. So www.henleymermaids.com. And to support uh, the Irish charities, uh, one of which is the Dublin Neurological Institute, click on the Irish flag. To support British charities, uh, you know, please click on the, the, the uh, Union Jack. Um, so Mary, big thank you again uh, today for taking part and uh, we look forward to you cheering us on uh, on the day we do the Bristol Channel, which hopefully will be July 22nd, give or take. 
Yeah, I look forward to that, Joan. And maybe I should go, go into the sea myself and support for you. <laughs> <laughs> Virtually. Will you? Virtually, I- yes. Yeah, no. Thanks a million, Joan. And wish you all the best, uh, yourself and your uh, the rest of the Harley mermaids on this great challenge that you're undertaking. It's a huge, huge, uh, I know the preparation has been huge and really thankful to, to you from everybody with Parkinson's in Ireland. Thanks a million, Joan. Brilliant. Thanks, Mary. Thank you.